On December 15, 2005, the patriarch of Chinese photovoltaics led Wuxi Shanga to become the first Chinese photovoltaic company listed on the American main board. The stock price skyrocketed like a rocket at the opening, reaching $90 at one point. This dazzling achievement propelled Shi Zhengrong to the top of China's rich list in 2006, making him the newly crowned richest person in China. However, what Shi Zhengrong did not anticipate was that, just seven years later, the photovoltaic empire he had built would suddenly collapse. The stock price plummeted from $90 to below $1, and Shi Zhengrong's fortune rapidly dwindled from $2.3 billion to zero. The collapse of Wuxi Shangda was a microcosm of the photovoltaic collapse that swept across China during that era. In that tidal wave engulfing the entire country, over 90% of photovoltaic companies perished, and the survivors were barely clinging on. A decade has passed, but are Chinese photovoltaic companies still alive? When we turn our gaze to the Chinese photovoltaic industry, we are surprised to find that, compared to the last high-profile appearance, this time Chinese photovoltaics has grown into a silent giant. The production and capacity of Chinese photovoltaic products have reached 95% of the world's total, making it a global dominator. So, how did Chinese photovoltaics survive that deadlock and stage a comeback on the global stage? Born in 1963, Shi Zhengrong studied abroad at the University of New South Wales in Australia in 1988, under the guidance of the father of solar energy, Nobel Prize winner Professor Martin Green. Under Professor Martin Green's guidance, he began working with solar cells and successfully developed polycrystalline silicon thin film solar cell technology, earning him a PhD. However, unlike his mentor, who focused only on solar research for space stations and spacecraft, Shi Zhengrong firmly believed in the vast market prospects of renewable solar energy, advocating for its civilian and market oriented development. In 2001, with support from various quarters, he founded Wuxi Shangda Solar Power Company, Limited, and assumed the role of general manager. However, despite producing solar energy, he found it difficult to sell because solar panels at that time were too expensive to justify large-scale use. It wasn't until 2004 that a real turning point occurred. In 2003, the German government revised the Renewable Energy Sources Act, aiming to phase out coal power and promote new energy, providing substantial subsidies to the photovoltaic industry. Subsequently, many countries such as Switzerland and Spain also introduced similar photovoltaic industry policies, causing explosive demand for photovoltaic products in Germany and across Europe, creating a massive market opportunity. Shangda, due to its early planning and excellent technology, became the first to take off. From 2002 to 2004, Shangda's output value consistently rose at an annual average growth rate of 1,000%, advancing like a shooting star. Who would have thought that a company founded in 2001 could go public in the United States in 2005 and become the richest person in China? It was truly Shi Zhengrong's golden age. Following the trend of China's real estate construction boom, various regions also began a photovoltaic construction boom, with 18 provinces and more than 100 cities designating photovoltaics as a pillar industry. Large-scale photovoltaic projects were initiated everywhere, and photovoltaic construction became a typical, Chinese-style, rush. The photovoltaic industry chain is quite complex and can be simplified into four major stages. The first and uppermost stage in the industry chain is the manufacturing of solar-grade silicon. The second stage involves silicon wafer production. The key technological processes in this stage include ingot casting, or single crystal growth, square cutting and grinding, and chemical etching and polishing. Precision is crucial, especially in the cutting process, which requires sophisticated instruments to cut the silicon ingot into thin slices with a thickness of only 170 to 180 micrometers, posing a significant technical challenge. The third stage involves etching electronic components, circuits, etc., onto the aforementioned silicon wafer. After additional physical and chemical processing, a photovoltaic cell is produced. The fourth stage is packaging. Since the amount of electricity generated by a single cell is extremely weak, 
an appropriate number of photovoltaic cells are connected in series or parallel to form a solar module that is encapsulated as a battery pack. The technological content in this area is relatively lower, and it is more of a labor-intensive industry. At that time, Chinese photovoltaic companies struggled with the first and second stages and were mainly concentrated in the fourth part of the photovoltaic industry chain mentioned above, essentially functioning as assembly plants. They would secure orders, import raw materials and components, assemble finished products, and then sell them to customers, essentially earning hard-earned money. Leveraging China's unique advantage in human resources, Chinese photovoltaics rapidly captured over 50% of the global market within just five years, creating one wealth legend after another, and enticing more participants into this race. The five years before 2010 were the golden years for Chinese photovoltaics, but this brilliance was only surface level. The reason is simple, Chinese photovoltaics had three major flaws, known as the three dependencies. In short, raw materials, technology, and the market were heavily reliant on foreign sources, with 90% of raw materials imported, 90% of core technology not in domestic hands, and 90% of products exported to Europe and America. The rapid progress of Chinese photovoltaics attracted the attention of international capital giants, making it a target for hunting. Due to the lack of advanced technology for polysilicon production in China, international capital drove up the prices of polysilicon raw materials. In less than three years, the price of polysilicon raw materials soared from $40 per kilogram to $500 per kilogram. As a result, the profits sustained by labor-intensive industries in Chinese photovoltaics were easily taken away by foreign suppliers from afar. The gross profit margin of Chinese photovoltaics dropped from 40% in 2006 to 10%. To outcompete rivals and prevent further cost increases, domestic photovoltaic companies began aggressively seizing channels and supplies. For instance, Shi Zhengrong at the time believed that the growth of the photovoltaic industry would continue, and the price of polysilicon would only increase. Therefore, it was essential to secure polysilicon production capacity to maintain an unbeatable position in the fierce competition. So, in 2006, Shi Zhengrong persuaded the CEO of the leading U.S. polysilicon manufacturer, MEMC, Navy Gerges, through various means and finally convinced him to sign a 10-year long-term supply agreement with Wuxi Shangda at a price of $100 per kilogram. In 2007, Shangda also signed a $678 million polysilicon supply contract with the U.S. company, Hoku. However, what Shi Zhengrong didn't anticipate was that he would pay a huge price for his judgment. Despite the dominating presence of Chinese photovoltaic products, China's photovoltaic installed capacity at that time accounted for only about 0.73% of the global total. The production was about 80 times the installed capacity, and more than 90% of its profits relied on the international market. This highly dependent business model on the international market posed significant risks. In 2008, the financial crisis erupted, followed by the European debt crisis, and governments had no extra funds, leading to a reduction in photovoltaic subsidies. For example, Germany reduced subsidies for rooftop photovoltaic systems and the removal of farmland facilities by 13%, while subsidies for converted areas decreased by 8%, and other areas saw a reduction of 12%. Meanwhile, photovoltaic companies from the United States, the European Union, and South Korea began suing China for allegedly dumping solar panels on the global market at prices below cost, violating international trade laws and restricting the export of Chinese photovoltaic products. On December 2, 2011, the U.S. Department of Commerce initiated an anti-dumping, countervailing, investigation against Chinese photovoltaic products. Subsequently, Europe officially launched an anti-subsidy investigation into Chinese photovoltaic products. This marked the famous double reverse in the history of photovoltaics. Under the double reverse, Chinese photovoltaic companies faced high anti-dumping duties ranging from 23% to 254% on exported goods. For Chinese photovoltaic enterprises relying on overseas markets, this was almost a fatal blow. In 2013, 
China's exports of photovoltaic products to the United States dropped by nearly 50 percent, and exports to Europe fell by 71 percent. Coupled with previous blind expansion, the entire photovoltaic industry was almost in a state of loss, caught in a vortex of overcapacity. With overcapacity in a shrinking market, prices naturally fell. The price of polysilicon plummeted from $500 per kilogram to $25 per kilogram. However, despite the market price being $25, Wuxi Shangda still had to import polysilicon from the United States at a contract price of $100 per kilogram. A loss of $75 per kilogram. After two years of negotiation, Shangda paid a penalty of $212 million, and the contract with MEMC was terminated. Two years later, Shangda's stock price, which was once over $90, dropped below $1, forcing the company into bankruptcy and restructuring. This was the tragedy of Shangda and a microcosm of Chinese photovoltaic companies during the same period. More than 350 Chinese photovoltaic companies went bankrupt during the same period, and even the former top 10 Chinese photovoltaic companies couldn't escape the crisis. Will China's photovoltaic industry fade away from this point onwards? Of course not, but how did it rise again step by step, like a phoenix reborn? We will continue to share this story in our next video. The photovoltaic industry in China is just a glimpse, and many industries in China have developed in a similar way. Perhaps you can see some clues from them. See you in the next video.